Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 406. We're continuing with our lesson theme, The Fall of the Fourth Empire. This will be part 5. Scripture indicates, <clears throat> after consolidating his hold, that is the hold of the beast, on the Luciferian system, God will stir competition mm -hmm. against him from regions outside <clears throat> the earth matrix. In other words, <clears throat> he is going to dominate <clears throat> the earth matrix and all that compose it, compose it. <clears throat> and then the Lord is going to draw him into conflict with those that exist beyond but a part of a larger matrix. <clears throat> These regions are called the north and the south. Now we find that the scripture tells us that these are creations that <clears throat> came into existence after the initial heavens and the earth. Turn to Job 26 verse 7. <clears throat> As we're turning, should we understand then that they came into creation between Genesis 1.27 and Genesis 2.7? No. It came into cre creation after the fall of Lucifer. Oh, okay. So, Genesis 1.3. Um, or just before it. Genesis 1.2, the earth became void. Yes, that's what I should have said. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Hmm. We're going to see where that fits in. Job 26, verse 7. He stretches out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Mm. Now we find that the word <coughs> empty place is tohu vaboru, the desolate place, the um, place that is wasted. So we find <coughs> the only place, two places where this word are, are, are Implied is turn to uh, Genesis first chapter. Mm -hmm. Verse two. <clears throat> And the earth was without form and void. Same word. Tohu vaboru. Desolate waste. So Job is saying after the desolation, the Lord stretched out a region over it, covered the empty place with another reality. Yes. Are we to understand that what it what it became was from Lucifer. Yeah, it became desolate because of Lucifer. But it, Tohu ba bohu because yeah, of Lucifer. Yes. But the the north Sophone came from Elohim. He covers the empty place mm -hmm. with this reality okay. called the north. So that reality is already in darkness because Genesis 1 2 has happened well the darkness was <clears throat> but the empty place the north covers the darkness great but the question is is the empty place in the darkness reality which it sounds like it is because it's not in the light reality which is about to create in uh, 1 4 no, because if it were, he, would say, he wouldn't say he stretches it over it. It is a separate 
reality a from yeah. Okay, a dimension within the darkness reality is what we're hearing. Okay, that is <coughs> basically not affected by the darkness reality. Well, then that raises the question. Forgive me, if we're going to this. No the north and the south, if they're not affected, does this imply that the inhabitants of it are not fallen? Because they're fallen. Yes. Well, like everybody else, when God makes something, he makes it perfect. Okay. The creatures that go into it mess it up. Okay. okay. Put darkness over the empty place. He put the north over the empty place. Okay. And the empty place is... Darkness. Okay. So it, it is empty because it was created empty. No, it became empty. That's why it's called darkness. It's destruction. It's wasted. It's a wasteland. And what Job is saying, he stretched something over it that basically the, 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 the reasoning behind it was he wanted a place where beings could dwell. They can't dwell anymore in these ruined, uh, uh, this ruined reality that Satan brought about. He's going now to create a new creation. He's going to do a restoration in this darkness region, mm -hmm. but he wants a place in which beings can reside. They can't reside anymore in that waste area. So this is what he does. He makes this, stretches this thing out. Then it's populated by Luciferians mm -hmm. okay. who are fallen. So they ultimately corrupt this place anyway. But that's not what Job is saying. Job is letting us know its origins. This is where it came into being. Only fallen yeah. dwell in there? Yeah. Only fallen. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Let's go on. Psalms 89, verse 11 and 12. <laughs> the heavens are thine. The earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. The north and the south, thou hast created them. So they are separate creations, not spoken into existence. None of the secondary creations spoken into existence. It's constructed. The north, the south, the earth, the lower heavens are all constructs, stretched out regions in which God has effected habitations. <clears throat> the north and the south thou hast created them. Tabor. Tabor is a, a word which means the broken place. And Harmon. Harmon is a mountain. <clears throat> He's saying, Tabor and Harmon shall rejoice in thy name. So he's talking prophetically that these regions ultimately are going to be liberated and they're going to glorify the Lord. So we see that they have become corrupted. So the Tabor and the, table and the Hermon are the spiritual Tabor and Hermon? Uh, yes. Right. Okay. But they have physical counts. Sure, I understand, but I want to make sure you're talking about the physical, the spiritual ones. Yes. So are they populated by Luciferians? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> so we're given a picture for a reason here. The earth, matrix, and the races are all going to fall under the dominion of the beast. God has preserved these other places to participate in the latter part of his plan in bringing all the Luciferians down to a point of judgment. Because the north and the south are used to demolish the beast. 
No, but they're used for habitations of beings that are going to give him a headache. Now we see that these regions are talked about. Turn to Zechariah, book of Zechariah. Zechariah 6th chapter <clears throat> We're going to read verses 1 <clears throat> to 6 <clears throat> And I turned and lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. The first chariot, the red horses, the second chariot, black horses, the third chariot, white horses, and the fourth chariot, grizzled and bay horses. So you see these four chariots being led by horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel to talk with me, What are these, my lord? The angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens. Some places the, the, it's, it's translated four winds of the okay. heavens. It's the same word, ruach. Yes. Which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. It's Y-H-V-H. The black horses which are therein go forth into the north mm -hmm. country. The white go forth after them. The grizzled go forth toward the south country. So you have these two creations, the north and the south. They are populated by fallen Luciferian intelligences. They're separate from the earth matrix. They came into existence after the earth matrix and the lower heavens were created and fell. As far as you're aware, are there any other dimensions that were created like this, secondary to the Earth? Not that I know of. Okay. And he goes on. <clears throat> and the bay went forth and sought to go that they might walk to and fro through the Earth. He's talking about the Earth matrix. You're looking at the the components of this whole scenario here. The earth matrix, which is composed of the lower heavens, the earth, the north, the south, and these sentinels, these four winds, these four spirits, patrol these regions because they're all under the influence of fallen Luciferians. So these are the, the four patrol spirits that we've seen elsewhere. Okay. Yes. So, Mr. Jones, they're patrolling, not for Elohim, for who? YHVH. YHVH sends them out. Because YHVH is given administration over all the lower creation. Things happen periodically. It talks about out of the north. Influences are coming out of the north not good influence, evil influence, is that these four neutralize, don't allow to affect the earth matrix, because if they did, it would present a lot more turmoil than it does. So Mr. Jones, yes. why is VH has to be getting inspiration from Elohim? Why do you say that? He's doing Prepper. Well, that's his job. That's what he was, <laughs> that's the job he was given to do. You mean he didn't mess it up? Is that what we should understand? Okay, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, White's we'll Rage doesn't have any problem keeping a lid on things. He's in control. 
His problem is when he's limited to keeping a lid on things and the Luciferians are able to run circles around him through their evil machinations. The reason for that is because he's not going to be allowed to do anything that would interfere with the Father's master, master plan. Sure. Amen. Let's go on. <clears throat> Principle. Scripture indicates the Luciferian kings from these places will have conflict with the beast. Remembering now that they are all connected. Turn to Daniel 11th chapter. Daniel 11, we're going to read verses 23 to 26. talking about the beast now. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, but he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. So he's talking about his relationship with Israel. He shall enter peacefully, peaceably, even upon, among, even upon the fattest places of the province, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. This is a beast, you said. This is a beast. Number In other eight. Words, yeah, yeah. He, he uses his power to consolidate more and more and more and more and more until he has a whole ball of wax in his control. When it said that he's done what his fathers couldn't do, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what he they couldn't do, precisely. Yes. Taking control over Israel. Well, he doesn't take control over Israel yet. <clears throat> what he's talking about, he spreads out, he conquers what his ancestors couldn't conquer. Alexander only conquered a certain amount. Right. And he's the biggest conqueror, basically, that you find. Well, this guy is going to excel beyond that. <clears throat> going to do what others couldn't do, because he's got the power now, consolidated in himself. Thank you. <clears throat> now, and he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army, and the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army, but he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Okay. Now, this is what you find. He is expanding beyond the earth matrix into the creations of the north and the south that are run by Luciferian kings. <clears throat> you note that the way that the War is described here. Hang on one second, excuse me. Yes. But he shall not stand. He, the beast, does not stand against the king of the north and the king of the south. What scripture are you looking at? Which uh, verse? Daniel eleven twenty five. He shall stir up the power of his courage against the king of the south with a great army. The king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great okay. mighty army. But he, the king of the south, shall not stand. South. Right. Uh, why doesn't he stand? It says, for they, for they shall forecast devices against them. I want you to note this. <clears throat> because it's talking about how they fight. Um, <clears throat> bear with me a moment. When they forecast devices, are they doing pseudo-realities? Yes. They're initiating energy through dunamis. Mm. They're bringing into reality <coughs> uh, conditions. Now, I want you to note what it goes on to say about this king of the south.
They shall four cases of righteousness against him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him. I read that again. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him. In other words, he betrayed by his own people. Mm -hmm. But the word destroy there is not to be understood from a human perspective. It comes from a Hebrew term, the bar, which means break him down. <clears throat> and you can see that it, he's not being killed because he, he's still around. They that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him. His army shall overflow and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings, the, the beast, south. the king of the south, okay. heart shall be to do mischief and they shall speak lies at one table but it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. So these are beings that they fight not with the human weapons. They're, f they're fighting, uh, generating forces that are aimed to weaken the opponent. <coughs> In terms of doing this, right. Uh, <coughs> that's where they, they fight wars in the celestial realm, the angels, archangels, you come against an enemy, the strongest shall prevail over the weakest. And when the strongest prevails, he captures, he imprisons his opponents. So that he can determine whatever he wants to do with his opponents. His opponent is, is basically uh, rendered <coughs> uh, totally incapacitated. Right. Unless someone gives that opponent Unless more he gets power, power right. back. You know, this guy is going to be rendered incapacitated such that he's going to lose this battle. Mm -hmm. But he's still around. He's still king. He's going to come back again at a later time to battle again because right. he gets power back. So you can see this is not referring to a human condition. Sure. Humans don't fight this way. <clears throat> Brings us to the next principle. <clears throat> Scripture indicates he shall be victorious for a time. Now understand, there's no way that these kings can be human because the beast in Revelation 13 is spoken of who can war against him. No human king on earth. The two prophets were the most powerful on earth. Right. They succumb. This is why he's able to gain dominance and obeisance from the gods because nobody feels that they can challenge him. He's too powerful. So if he's warring against the king of the south and the king of the north, the king of the south and the king of the north are not human. Let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture indicates he shall be victorious for a time. <clears throat> Down to verse 27 and 28. Both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief. They shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. Now this is when he turns on Israel. Mm -hmm. He comes back into the earth matrix with all this splendor and the stuff he's gotten. He eyes Israel. Israel is worshiping YHVH. It's the only one that stands out of his reach. It and the saints. Everybody else in the earth matrix is focused on him. He's the center of all activity in the earth realm. And he looks at that. He's not happy with it. Scripture indicates Prior to this time, the beast, in order to keep the Luciferians and the humans in line, brings in the false prophet. In other words, he's, he's gone away and <clears throat> nobody, no dictator, you'll never find a dictator, whether it's Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, <coughs> Uh, um, Mao Zedong leaves what they've conquered unsecure because they're scared to death that somebody will rise up mm -hmm, take it and uh, knife him in the back yes. or something. So he, he gets his buddy, the false prophet. Turn to Revelation 13. We're going to read verses 11 to 15. He 
And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. So he is a cherubim, the cedar of Lebanon, like the beast. They exercise the same power because they come from the same family. Hmm. Well, when you say the same power, he hasn't, the false prophet hasn't received power from the ten or from the god of forces. So why are you saying the same power? Well, not to the same degree, but it's the same power. You've just seen it. He exercises the same power as the beast. In other words, what the beast can do, false prophet can do, but the beast can do it to a greater degree because okay. he's got more power, but they come from the same family. They've been imbued with this ability, right. this dunamis, okay. on the same line. The, 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 the cherubic dunamis, in other words. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come from the same cloth. Right. Yes. <coughs> they have another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, he spake as a dragon. So he takes this veneer of deceit. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. So he is the um, he is the what the priest is to the king. The priest gets the nation to recognize the king as sovereign and direct worship to the king. Okay. And the priest becomes the interme intermediary in that relationship. Right. They call him the false prophet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's taking the spiritual high ground. <clears throat> the beast is taking the, the physical high ground mm -hmm. in, in direct control. The beast is, uh, the, 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 the false prophet is manipulating sure. through chicanery and deceit. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So he's solidifying his authority over them to get them to understand whatever he says. This is, this is authority. You could take this to the bank because, boom, I can do this, I can do that. And the people fall right in line. It's even them that dwell on the earth by means of these miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So he's solidifying the beast whole. Wherever the beast is, these miracles are there to glorify him, sure. not the false prophet. Right. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life, and the word life there is spirit, mm. pneuma. So it's a demon that he puts within the image of the beast. Right. Life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, this is well, this is all we want to do. This between verse 15 and 16, you've got a large space of time before the mark goes in. Mm -hmm. Other things happen. This is what we want to focus on. The image of the beast is the propaganda minister. And what he does is exactly what you see here. He speaks, issues edicts. The purpose of them is worship to the beast in many different forms and if you do not worship the beast you're going to be killed so ever they take this thing as the inference is it doesn't locomote it has to be taken mm -hmm. and it speaks its propaganda bringing cementing control over wherever the beast wants it to be placed now, having said that, Scripture indicates after making an agreement with a group of traders mm -hmm. of the Levites in Jerusalem, sellouts, the beast with a host of evil Luciferians <coughs> will stop the temple worship and stand the image of the beast in the holy place. 
The image of the beast will then begin his spiel demanding worship. Worshiping the beast or die. This will cause the true believers to flee to the mountains. Turn to Matthew 24, verses 15 to 21. That's returning. Mm -hmm. Why does the beast need a traitorous group to bring about this action? Well, he can't do it outside of a, having an inroad into the inner circle. But my point is... Since he can't he march in there sit the image of the beast in there and expect to have compliance by okay. the population. Okay, <laughs> so the, 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 uh, what do you call them? the traitorous group are behaving in the same way as, what's this guy's name? The false prophet. Sure. They're telling their people, sure. forget all about YHVH, bow down to the beast. Sure. That sounds like the Pope. That sounds like uh, what you got here in the political spectrum. I thought you were pointing in a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, okay. Matthew 24, we're going to start with verse 15, then we're going to go back to them. <clears throat> when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, that's mm. the image of the beast. Right. Stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. So this is meant for an individual, not from organized religion. Because organized religion will say the abomination of desolation is, is the beast sitting in the, in the, in the holy place. No, it's not what he says. says and you see the abomination stand. The abomination of desolation is the image of the beast that puts off his spiel about worshiping the beast or dying. And he goes on. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child. And to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter neither on the Sabbath day. For then, for then, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be. I just want to stop right there. Then we're going to compare this scripture with Daniel. Turn to Daniel 11. Verse Before that, we're going to do okay. Background: the beast gets caught up again with conflict with the kings of the north and the south. Night, verse twenty-nine. This is the backdrop of what's going to happen in Jerusalem. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south. But it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Shedom shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. He's going to get angry at Israel. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. So he's going to blame Israel. Doesn't say why. But somehow... Him having a problem in losing <clears throat> this conflict. And he's going to determine that. He's going to take them down. And he's going to have them worship him rather than YHVH. He may blame YHVH for whatever it is. Right. And want to take it out on YHVH's people. We don't know. <clears throat> but this is what's, what he's talking about here. For the ships of Shedem shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return in indignation against the Holy Covenant, the covenant between YHVH, the Holy Covenant is referring to the Mosaic Covenant. <clears throat> so shall he do, he shall even return and have intelligence with them 
that forsake the Holy Covenant. This is the traitorous group, group yes. of Levites. And arms shall stand on his part. In other words, he's talking here about aggression. He's instituting um, activity now in the temple area. He's got a force that's with him <clears throat> that is going to put down the worship of the, uh, the Levite priests and those that are faithful to YHVH. Mm -hmm. Arms shall stand on this point and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place, they shall place, they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Mm -hmm. So these Luciferians that are part of his group are going to probably slaughter the Levites in the temple region because it says they pollute it, desecrate it, and then they're going to place this image there. The image is going to start a spiel about worshiping the beast or dying. Verse 32, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. So what he's going to do is capitalizing <clears throat> on all the Judases of the Levite class and turn them into <clears throat> a focus that will bring down the covenant, literally d destroy it, replace it with this babbling image of detestation that gets everybody to worship the beast. Right. That is going to trigger the great tribulation. tribulation. Okay. 